Well, hello there, motherfuckers, and welcome to your Raw review. So, you know, yet another flat show. It's WrestleMania season. I know I keep saying that. So, you know, the biggest possible feud that they could have had, you know, it could have been this um, work shoot that would have been awesome, Corey Graves and Booker T, but, you know, we're just going to not pay that off. Oh, we were just joking around. You guys bought into it. You know, here you are saying that we're all marks. And now you guys are the marks because you believed it. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, go check out my videos if you want my opinions on that. I'm not going to harp on that, you know, here in this video. So we started off with a true star, John Cena. Hey, you know, right here you could tell from this first segment with Cena and The Miz, there's as many people that knock these guys. These are pros right here. Did you notice this first segment? It kind of reminded me of how Raw used to be. And, and I like the way how they utilized uh, Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. They actually looked like a threat. You know, I never understood... Why they book these guys to be like J&J &J security getting their asses whooped. They're not small guys, but yet they're always, they're always getting beat down by Finn Balor. You know, you saw how they, they were getting their asses whooped by the fuckboy Finn Balor. And it, it's like it's like a joke, you know, but here they laid out Cena. This actually looked good, you know, and um, Cena challenged The Miz. He says... You know, uh, and this it was a weird challenge. I will critique it by saying that, you know, oh, you you know, winner gets to enter the elimination chamber first. Like, out of all the things that you could say, you know, and challenge the Miz to, I mean, you could say, okay, yeah, there's stakes to this match, but these stakes are kind of stupid. Who gets in first? I mean, now we know who's last. We know who's first. So it's like. What is there even to look forward to? You know, I'm not really looking forward to the match. You know, it, at least we could look forward to, if we're going to watch this uh, pay-per-view to who's coming in the elimination chamber. But now we already know two spots. So that takes the surprises down from six to four. And it's not even like the Royal Rumble to begin with. But it's just, you know, the allure of watching the match, it's almost like they're giving spoilers here. So I, I don't understand why they're doing this. They, I think they might have done it a couple of times throughout the history since this pay per view, be, you know, came to be, or since they started doing the chamber match. But this is like a bit ridiculous, to, to be perfectly honest. I mean, we're gonna now know who's coming into the match. So you know, obviously Cena wins. This match was worked by two pros. The promo was worked by two pros, and. This is pretty much the best we saw for the rest of the show. But you could clearly tell that the first half an hour of Raw that was dedicated to these guys, that this is exactly how it should be. This is exactly, you know, how the the stars should act, how they should be presented in the ring. They were selling, you know, the big move ended the match. I, I mean, you know, this is exactly how... Uh, matches should be booked and, you know, if they're going to be laid out beforehand, they should be laid out like this. There wasn't, you know, a lot of choreographed stuff. And I, I guess that's why people are down on The Miz. You know, they don't like it that he's like, a, you know, you know, when he came in, he doesn't, he didn't do all these flips and shit and he didn't have a big indie reputation. And then that's really the God's honest truth about The Miz. They, they don't like him because just like Enzo, he doesn't have this big indie background. He didn't spend 10 years in ROH, you know, uh, doing a spot fest every night. So so people don't like him. So, you know, they're not. he's not going to be as popular as a, a Roderick Strong. But then again, you know, that's why The Miz does movies and Roderick Strong is in 205 Live. It's, you know... It's how it goes, folks. You know, th this is why certain guys get to, you know, have other opportunities in entertainment and other guys are just wrestlers. You see the difference there between um, certain talent. You've got certain talent that goes on 
to, you know, you know, just like take a look at The Rock. I know people are going to say, oh, that's a very big example to make right there. But The Rock didn't really do anything super athletic, didn't fly off the top rope with a fucking Phoenix splash crashing through 10,000 tables. Uh, you know, he, he didn't blow himself up, he, you know, with some fucking electric steel cages or, you know, in, in, in CZW, whatever. So, and somehow, some way, this guy made it to become one of the biggest wrestlers. And, and now he doesn't even need wrestling because he's, he's, he's transcended beyond it. So there you go. I mean, the, the, you know... The argument about who does the most moves that Wade Keller and Meltzer Magoo try to come up with every week, that this is the recipe for making stars. Take a look at this first half an hour, and you'll see exactly why that shit doesn't fly, why no one is watching it. If there was more of this, there would be more eyes. I'm not saying it like this was the best thing ever, but there was a clear-cut difference between this stuff and the rest of the show. Uh, backstage, we saw the Nerdometer, which was, you know, unfortunately very reminiscent of Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin. They, they're doing this stupid, I don't know what it is, they're doing selfie videos, they're, they're, they're putting text on the screen, you know, showing it like, this is a live show, but they're editing this, so it's not really live. You can, the whole point of doing a pre-taped segment is to make it appear like it's not pre-taped. You know, when you put words over the screen, obviously these filters and shit. And also it looks cheap. Because this is the stuff that anybody could do on their computer. Uh, I, I mean, honestly, you could go into any editing software and put fucking words on the screen. I mean, my editing software could do it too, and it's as cheap as it gets. You know, it's not even Final Cut Pro or anything like that. It's, you know, it, it, and you can still do it. it. It's cheap. I don't know why we're doing this in 2018. 2018! And we're having cheap text popping up on the screen like a fucking Snapchat filter. I mean, honestly, I'm expecting them to have the fucking puppy face one day with the tongue hanging out. I mean, what, what, what could be gained? from these fucking filters, it doesn't make any sense to me, why would we, uh, why do we have to have this extra crap on the screen, and the nerdometer thing, the nerds thing that Luke Gallows does, it's not funny, it's not catching on, no one's buying the t-shirt, so why is the guy still doing it, it's just very lame, it's dated, you know, calling people nerds, you know, uh, it's you know, do they really think that that's going to get over? Like honestly, as a catchphrase, whoever came up with this—I mean, these are the people. They, they should be held responsible for bad ideas like this, and they're not, because it's an endless stream. There's only worse ideas, and we're going to get to that later on in the show as we we see a, a very bad idea on this show. Um, and I can't wait to talk about it. So the Revival defeats Gallows and Anderson. 50-50 booking everybody. You know, the Revival's cutting uh, these shoot promos on the fans, these work shoot promos, and talking about, you know, how all these marks, you know, all they want to do is see flips, and they forgot all about how old school used to be. And, you know, now it's just back to basic wrestling matches. Forget about it being intriguing and cutting promos that make them stand out. You know, no, just boring average guys, you know, NXT Japan guys. Just throw them out there. What the wrestling do to talking? Seems like it's working. You know, that's why you've got low ratings. That's why, you know, McMahon is panicking because no one is buying tickets to his pay-per-view events. You know, it's because the, the wrestling is so good, right? You know, it's all about the matches, guys. You know, no one needs any character development. It works for the indies. Why not for a publicly traded company? Uh, Kurt Angle comes out and talks about Jason Jordan. He's going to miss WrestleMania due to a, a neck injury, which is legit, by the way. Uh, you know, the fan, these stupid marks are cheering. It's, it, you know, they, they already know because they read the dirt sheets ahead of time that Jordan is going to be on, and they're cheering this. They're, they're, they're cheering a guy getting injured. This is the classy 
people were talking about here. When we talk about the marks here in these videos, these are the classy people. Yay, someone's livelihood's being taken away. Super classy there, guys, you know. Uh, now, it wasn't like the whole crowd, in all honesty, was getting behind. It's not like everybody cheered for Jason Jordan's demise. But there were some audible cheers, and that alone just, you know, when you have one segment of the the crowd cheering something, that's too many people. What's wrong with these people? I mean, honestly, they should have called up a mental institution right then and there and committed th that section of the crowd. How can you be happy? You know, or just because you don't want to watch him, you're going to be happy that this guy got injured, that he, you know, needs to take time off because, you know, and here's the, these guys, they always are sitting around on the internet, always making YouTube videos. Oh, they put their bodies on the line. <laughs> yeah, okay, so look at the hypocrites now. So Jason Jordan is one of those guys on the roster who puts their body on the line for your entertainment. And there you are. Yay, he's injured because I don't enjoy watching him. So you're going to celebrate it because, you know, you, you, don't, you don't like his character on TV. How demented are you people? How, what, what kind of shit's going on in your head that you're that messed up that you'd actually cheer for a guy getting injured? I think it's time to take a look at, in the mirror and call a self-help line, folks, because, you know, you've gone off the deep end when you start cheering injuries. Could you imagine in the NBA if a ba basketball player on the opposing team you say, you know, say he got injured in the common injury, tore his ACL. You know, say, say you're, um, you know, say you're a Knicks fan and they're facing off against the Chicago Bulls, whatever it may be. You know, it. So you, you, you got the guy on the on the Bulls tears his ACL. Would do, do you ever hear people? Do, do you ever hear the New York fans cheering? Be, be, because somebody on the opposing team got injured? No, you don't. Because it doesn't happen. It only happens in the magical land of wrestling. That where, where everybody, you know, seems to put all their better judgment aside because it only matters who I like. You know, if if, if it's not indie guys that, that have been working the indie circuit for 15, 20 years, then no, they're no good, apparently. So Jason Jordan, because, you know, he's not an, an indie darling, you know, I I don't get it because they loved him in NXT when he was NXT, and I know you're gonna say, oh, but this is what you always say, Brett. You know, uh, a little crowd of 500 people is nothing compared to a crowd of 10,000. You know, on any given night, and be that as it may, I mean, the thing is, uh, many of those people are familiar with NXT. These you know, the, the, the house right there is familiar with them. You know, the, the this is awesome crowd. You know, it's just, I think, like I said, it's the ADD of the crowd. They don't give a fuck. They, uh, you know, they, they, they go from one thing to the next. You know, they, they've already given up on Oscar. They've already given up on the female Naka Murphy. They've even given up on, on Naka Murphy himself. Only certain crowds really seem like they're digging him. They've given up on Finn Balor. You know, this is why you can't go by the crowd. They're not a good consensus of what people really want. Um, so Seth Rollins comes out to Kurt Angle. He said he's sorry about what happened to Jason Jordan, but he wants to be included in the Fatal 4-Way match tonight. So it's going to be the Fatal 5-Way. It's a second chance, so, you know... Uh, people that are not in the elimination chamber now have a chance to get in it. Okay, so you know more stakes. They're 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 doing stakes now. You know, all of a sudden they they got the sudden urge to start you know putting things on the line in matches. Something that an old concept they seem to have forgotten about. So at least they're doing that. Bailey defeats Nia Jax. Um, you know, once again, the wrestling fans are calling this a classic. Oh, it's a classic, a classic. You know. Okay, whatever you guys say. So, you know, um, the Banks loses again. What it, you know, I don't know why it's so boring with Sasha Banks. I mean, 
here is a girl that has a lot of heat. What we don't even know, you've got one segment of the fans that praise her ass like she's the best thing ever. Oh, she's the boss. I mean, we still don't know what she's the boss of, you know. Uh, but whatever the case may be, then you've got the segment of the population, uh, like myself, who thinks she should be held responsible for injuring others. And then you have the others that, 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 you know, demonize her because she, you know, refuses to smile in pictures with fans. You know, even if she's not being interrupted, she still does resting bitch face in every single fan's um, photos. You know, and like Bully Ray had said, Bubba Ray Dudley. You should be concerned when the fans don't want to take your picture, when they're not waiting at the airport for your autograph. You know, so this girl, you know, not only does she injure people, not only is she dangerous in the ring and dangerous to herself. I, I mean, what, what was it? The two weeks ago, last week, when she almost fucking killed herself, when, you know, she smashed down on her face. Uh, you, you know, I, I, I don't know what the case is with her, but... You know, instead of taking advantage and turning her into a big time heel, I mean, this is a girl that that in that injured somebody so badly their career came to an end. If you're gonna keep her and you're not gonna reprimand her, you're not gonna punish her for being unsafe or demote her back to NXT, then at least capitalize on it. Have her go out there and gloat about ending Paige's career. I know that might be very politically incorrect, maybe pushing the envelope too far, but at least it's an idea. At least it's something that would get her heat, and you'd know she'd be remembered forever if she did that. But, you know, we're playing it safe. So Nia Jax comes out at the end. Um, she beats both girls up. Okay. Um... Then they play a video of the female Naka Murphy. You know, she's not going to be on Raw, guys. You know, she, you know, she won the Women's Royal Rumble. She's super important. But, uh, oh, I didn't even mention it because it was so forgettable. But Angle made the announcement dur during the whole thing with Jason Jordan, actually, that, uh, th that Ronda Rousey will be signing her contract. At the at, at elimination chamber, and people booed that, you know. So they moved on very quickly from that. So just a bunch of quick mentions tonight. Oh, by the way, Ronda Rousey is everybody boos. I'm not going to acknowledge it. They move on to the next thing. And and Oscar, she 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 fucking wins the the women's Raw Rumble. Oh, we're making history. First women's Raw Rumble, and, and then they they just forget about it. Just here's a video, you know. <laughs> There's a three-hour show on, and they don't even have enough time to actually physically show you Asuka. I, I mean, this is the super important girl. They had to have her win this Rumble. It just had to happen. They had to give the fans what they wanted. They had to give it to the Japanese girl, and she's not even on the show. Instead, just... Look at look how dominant she is. You know, we're not going to make new moments. Let's just focus on the past. I mean, you just you just can't make this up. I mean, this is lazy booking. This is lazy creative. We got nothing for Oscar this week. She almost kicked Sasha Banks's head in two weeks ago, and now we're just you know we're going to show you some highlights. This isn't superstars. This isn't live wire from back in the day. This isn't velocity where we're recapping the week. This is Monday Night Raw. And, and, and they don't even have time to show you the Royal Rumble winner. <laughs> um, Absolution defeats Mickey James and Alexa Bliss. There was a little backstage segment they explained, you know, Alexa wants to team up with Mickey in the chamber if Absolution does it as strategy. Okay, you know, whatever. We have the match. Um, then we have get the big segment that I want to talk about. So Elias is in the ring. He's cutting, um, uh, you know, he's, he's doing his gimmick. You know, he's playing the guitar. He's singing. He's insulting people. And no one's really, like, responding to it. I don't understand how you could be insulting people. They're not coming out. Um, anyway, so Braun Strowman, they, they, they get, you know, who is it? JoJo gets on the mic and says, ladies and gentlemen, 
like they do for Braun Strowman's intro. Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman comes out, sits down on a stool, just like Elias does, picks up a big stand-up bass, puts it on his lap, starts strumming it, he breaks it. Then he starts singing to Elias. Y yeah, starts singing. I'm talking to the people that didn't see it. For the people that did see it, hold on a second. So, because I got to do it justice. I got to describe this. So he starts singing to him in a sing-songy voice. Keep in mind that this is the same guy that they label the monster among men. He's vicious. He's untamed. He's, and it's funny because I talked about this last week. Remember the match where Braun Strowman was asking the crowd if they wanted one more running power slam? I says, can you imagine if Kane played to the crowd? Can you imagine if The Undertaker played to the crowd? Can you imagine if any of these big monsters, King Kong Bundy, you, you know, you, you name it, uh, Andre the Giant, playing to the crowd? And, and Braun Strowman has more of this character where he's supposed to be like, you know, like a real brute, right? You know, he, 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 tipped over an ambulance, he uh, did the same thing to a semi-tractor trailer, not only that, he um, he, he toppled down like, like a two-ton structure on top of Kane and Brock Lesnar, I mean, he, he, he pushed the whole fucking stage on top of Kane just mere weeks after that, so you would think to yourself, okay, you know, this is a guy that's a monster, so we're going to build this guy accordingly. A few weeks removed from all that shit, he's there on the stage, and he's singing to another wrestler with a bass. It's a comedy skit. Okay, I understand that there's people out there that didn't like when they, they tried to explore Kane. You could even say during the Attitude Era... Maybe did Vince Russo go too far by trying to make him friends with x -Pac? But it was done in a tactful way, right? And even when Kane did that Canaanites thing with Hulk Hogan and The Rock, people always say, oh, that was the moment Kane went downhill. Oh, my God. Right? But the thing was, it was entertaining. And somehow later in the night, Kane still went out there and he was still the big red machine. It was a surprise. We were taken aback. I can see why somebody might have a problem with that. But, you know, and maybe it's just the nostalgia that's making me biased. Whatever the case may be, I can see the arguments for it. But I always say I loved that promo with Kane. I thought it was funny. It made me laugh. This wasn't funny. That's also the other thing. I, I didn't laugh at it. I'm, I'm looking at the YouTube comments. It's one of the most highly rated videos on WWE's channel for Raw. The, people are saying, I'm loving this. This is the best segment I've seen in years. The best segment of the night. Uh, I thought Cena and Miz was far more entertaining and better. Uh, I, I mean, how exactly? Oh, oh, wow, he's a great singer. Okay, he doesn't have a bad voice, but are we really praising this? This is the guy that, like I said, he's one of the most over guys on the roster. And, and again, I mean... They're having a pal around promoting these videos with the Mixed Match Challenge with Alexa Bliss, Team Big Little, Little Big, whatever the fuck it's called, having him dress up as an elf, and now you're turning him into a songtress? I mean, what are they doing? What, what, what is this? What are we talking? I mean, come on. I don't know if anybody's going to really remember this. But I think it's time that we put on a little robe. <laughs> a little son we used to call the rant robe back in the day, folks. How you, how you doing? How, 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 how's it going? How, how you doing there? Okay, so for people that didn't know, back in 2012, 2013, I used to have, well, I still actually have that robe. But this is the new terry cloth robe. This is a lot better. It's Turkish cotton. It's a far better robe. Far better robe. So 
if I'm going to complain about wrestling, I want to be comfortable and warm. So let's talk. I look a little bit like Damian Sandow. I know that, but uh, it's very appropriate. So here's the thing, folks. You want to have a big star like Braun Strowman, a big monster. They have him over there trying to sell him as this character that he's indestructible, that he's a monster, he's untamed. And somehow, some he's, he's got a light side, right? He, he just wants to sing. Did you ever see Kane sing? No, you, you didn't. That's because it's it's lame. And it, it's, it's, you know, it, it's a little bit emasculating for such a, a wrestler with such testosterone levels, right? This is a guy who yells, like he comes out and you hear the, you hear the roar right away. So, come on. I mean, you've got this guy coming out there singing on the stool. And, okay, so then he comes down to the ring. He beats up Elias. Then he bashes him with the bass. Um, uh, I mean, he should be fucking dead after that. I mean, he smashed him with a big fucking bass. It's not like being smashed with a guitar. Those fucking basses are heavy if you ever held them. I mean, and the thing is, like, you... I just can't get past this, how people were praising it. They were saying that this was a good thing, that this is something that we should be applauding, that this was a great segment, guys. No, it was not. Not at all. This was horrible. This was bad. Very, very, very lame, cheesy, and out of character for Braun Strowman. And they just keep hacking away at this guy. And I was saying that at least it's on the internet. I, I know a lot of people saw it. It's got a million views and stuff. But I'm saying, okay, at least the Alexa Bliss thing is like non-existent in terms of the realm of Raw. That That's kind of like a non-canon type of thing, I guess you could say. As weird as that sounds. I, I, I mean, we're like saying this is like we're talking about Dragon Ball GT, right? It's not canon. It's not... You know, it's not canon in, in, in this universe. I mean, we're talking about reality here, like an actual TV show. and It's not fucking anime. You know what I'm saying? These are real people, and we got to talk like this. So so now this is the first time we're hit home. Now it's like, now it's not the Mixed Match Challenge. Now it's not something that's on their website. This is on Raw, their big flagship show, and they decided to put him out there and have him fucking sing. I think they're out of their mind, and I think these these stupid fucking people here in the YWC are out of their mind for thinking this is a good thing. To me, this just completely destroyed his character. Congratulations, guys. Good job. You destroyed Braun Strowman. You worked so hard on him. I said that if there was... One good thing you were doing, you at least were doing Braun Strowman halfway right. I'll be nice and even say three quarters right. You know, you were mostly doing him right. He was one of the most entertaining things on this show. And now he's out there playing a fucking stand-up bass singing. I mean, it's like... Okay, so Brad, you said you want characters, you want people to, uh, you know, show their personalities. This is, this is not what I have in mind. See, there's a way of doing things, and then doing them well. And this was not well at all. This was bad, very fucking terrible. Let's move on. Um, so. Uh, Roman Reigns defeated Sheamus, and I don't really know what purpose this match served, but it was okay. Um, Ivory is being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Well-deserved. She was in my top ten list of, of WWE women of all time. I, I like Ivory a lot. Um, you know, good memories of her during the Attitude Era. I even liked her feud. The feud with China was great. Um, she probably won't be in the Hall of Fame. They're talking about China. We're always talking about China. Stephanie is talking about China again. and But she won't be in the Hall of Fame. Because she did. Okay. Uh, Seth Rollins and, uh, and Finn Balor close out the show by doing the double pin. So they can't decide which jobber they want to win. So they, they give it to both of them. I, I mean, honestly, like, okay, it's a unique win. We could say that, um, 
so you know both of these guys I guess are getting into the chamber but whatever uh, so you know it's a it's a lazy finish they can't pick a winner so they picked both of them you know they they did they didn't want the YWC mad at them they didn't want Keller and Magoo saying oh you guys are leaving out one of the others I mean like honestly the double pin thing I, it, it wasn't even necessary to get the point A to point B. Why did we even need this? Why do we need a controversial victory? Like just, it, it's just like pulling one out of your ass just to have one. Like they're trying so hard for these qualification matches. Like they weren't even doing them for a time. There was no stakes, and and now all of a sudden they want to have stakes, and it's for the most ridiculous shit. You know, second chance, second chance at what? Did any of these guys even get a first chance? <laughs> but they, okay, and, and, and like, the way they begin the show, like, it was, a, I was enjoying the Miz and, and Cena. I like the chemistry they have together. I like both of them as performers. But for fuck's sakes, I mean, like, you're just having a match and decide who enters first. I mean that that that's the that's the lamest stakes I've ever heard in my life. I mean, this is what the whole night was about. It, it, it was just about determining who's gonna be in the chamber, what order they're coming in. It's like, you know I I, I don't even know, guys. It, it's a little bit ridiculous, is all I'm saying. They can't even decide who they want to be in this chamber. Uh so they you know the and they know it's very uninteresting. And now they're having very, very low numbers for this show. Now, no, no one even gives a fuck about it. No one's, I don't even think, I don't know if they were referring to this, but there's reports that the attendance is way down for the pay-per-views coming up. Nobody is buying tickets to them. So, you know, they're, I, if you're trying to entice people with Seth Rollins and, and Fuckboy Balor, you know, good luck with that. I don't really think that that's really going to get more asses in the seats. Oh, you mean to tell me Finn Balor's going to be in the chamber? Whoa, I've got to buy a ticket to that show. Seth Rollins is going to be in there? Oh, oh man, who's he going to injure? I can't wait to go. I mean, honestly, are you really going to sit here and tell me that those are going to be selling points for your pay-per-view? If so, get, get, get the hell out of here. I mean, seriously, guys. I mean, we spent the whole night Three hours, you know, being told, uh, you know, oh, this is who's going to go in first. Here's who's going to go in last. And, oh, here, now watch the pay-per-view because you've got some more indie darlings in the match. Right, g give me a break. I am so sick to death of Seth Rollins. This guy has nothing. He There was a bit of promise with him when he was first crowned champion. You know, when he was a heel with the authority, I, I thought they were going places with him. But ever since then, it's just been a, a downward slope. Since this guy returned, it, it, it's and he is like the lamest baby face I've ever seen in my life. As generic as you could get for a, a seemingly top star. I mean, this guy shows no personality. I mean, that's not his fault. I, I mean, really, he showed personality as a heel, but they're writing him, like, to the letter as, like, just a generic baby face. And it is very, very boring. I, I mean, it is very, very dry, and it is tiresome. It's the same old act. I mean, when he came out there with Kurt Angle, uh, you know, just asking for the match. I mean, just asking for in the most basic way. The words that he, you know, that they put in that promo, it's like, you know, it got him from point A to point B. But it's just like, man, there's nothing interesting. Why am I sitting there watching this segment when he's not even putting it in an interesting way? I mean, like, uh, these, these promos. I mean, they stripped him of his character. Like, what, what is it that people see in Seth Rollins? Maybe that's why they gave him back the curb stomp finisher. Like, hey, this guy's boring, so we might as well throw them a fucking bone and give him back the finisher that everybody liked. I don't know, guys. I, I really don't know. So, you know, Elimination Chamber, great. You know, three hours. We don't even see the Royal Rumble winner, for fuck's sakes. Oh, oh, by the way, yeah, Ronda Rousey, yeah, she's going to be signing her contract at the Rumble, guys. 
we're just going to mention it for, for like 30 seconds, though, and you're all going to boo, and we're going to move on to the next thing. Uh, I mean, this is a company that's all out of sorts. The, the stuff that they're trying to sell is their 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 big moments, the big Royal Rumble, which is not even on the show. Five-minute video. Not even five minutes. Ronda Rousey, biggest acquisition in years. That little blurb right there. Kurt Angle mentions it. No one's impressed from the crowd, so they move on. I mean, if this is not a company falling apart, crumbling at the seams, then I don't know what is. I mean, I look at this show, and I and you could clearly see the problems. Braun Strowman singing. How, how much worse does it get than that? I mean, that is the bottom of the barrel. I mean, this is like not only the bottom of the barrel, but there's a hole in the barrel, and, and it's leading straight down into a giant chasm. I mean, that's... That's how bottom of the barrel it was. It, 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 it's, it couldn't get any worse if you tried. And it seemed like they were... I mean, the thing is, it's like, I know it's no effort, but it's almost like they're trying, like really putting in an effort to do the opposite of making this show as bad as it could possibly be. This is almost like a how-to of how to sink a company fast. You, you know, take all your strengths... And weaken them all. You know what I mean? And, and the funny thing is, like, you could see the effort of trying to acquire Ronda Rousey. But then just, you know, you don't show her for weeks. They, they, they boo her. And then it's almost like she's just a distant memory. No mention of her for the rest of the show. Uh, I mean, why? Like, it, it, you have nobody to blame but yourselves. For, for them booing that Ronda Rousey announcement. I just had to talk a lot about this a little bit more before we close out the video. Because you didn't show her for weeks. You timed it so poorly that you booked her when she was right about to set out to Hollywood to film a movie. I mean, how could the timing be any worse? You waited three years to sign her, and you waited for her at the moment when she was going to be busy doing something else. And then you make her say all this bullshit. Oh, I'm going to be committed. I'm full-time. Well, really? You're starting off by looking like a part-timer, and you haven't even been there at all. Uh, so, you know, you haven't you have even yet to appear on a Raw or SmackDown. One appearance, and you're like, that's it for a month. I mean, you wouldn't see this back in the day. Could you imagine when they acquired Mike Tyson? When they had Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson was out there with DX every week because they were going to milk it for as much as they could. They had a big star. They were going to use him to their advantage to sell a WrestleMania. And instead, you know, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't get it. I, I don't know... What, what they're doing, why they think that they could get away with this. And, you know, don't they see, like, how much the ratings fell down that that that, that Raw, after the Royal Rumble, and especially Raw 25? They must know that nobody likes them, that nobody likes their current direction. See, and the thing is, if they thought what they were doing was good, they wouldn't go and play back to the nostalgia for Raw 25. You know, because it's they're weird. Like, they want to cater to these internet fans, and they want to please that niche audience. But every once in a while, it's like almost they realize that they know they suck, and they start playing off the past a little bit. But they need to, I mean, I don't I don't even know how they're not being held responsible for, for, for really destroying this company, really making it just unbearable to watch. I mean, because it's like, you tuned in to see Ronda Rousey after the Rumble. And you're being told that she's a full-time player. And then you're saying, no, she's not there. Then you're being told that Asuka's the best thing women's wrestling has to offer. Oh, she didn't. Then why are, Why is almost every single woman being featured from, from the, the roster on, on Raw? Every single woman except for Asuka. What was she doing during this show? If you're saying that she's so important that she won the, the the Rumble and that she's deserving and she's the top star, 
And she's the, you know, that's their winner. They picked her to win. Don't you, you know, and they always talk, oh, we do what the fans want. Well, okay, you know, so so then where is she? I'm not even a big Oscar fan, but I'm going to say, if, if you're going to have her win the Rumble and, and everything, you're going to build her up, then, you know, you got to have her on the show. Nowhere to be fair. What can I say, folks? What can I say? Anyway, it's enough for right now. This has been your YWC champ. Signing out.